Welcome to Partnering Leadership, a top global leadership podcast for purpose-driven leaders with a growth mindset, seeking to learn from the leadership journey of change makers and business insights from leading global thinkers. For additional leadership insights and bonus content, visit us at partneringleadership.com. Now here's your host, Mahan Tavakoli. Welcome to Partnering Leadership. I'm really excited to have you along with me on this journey of learning and growth. As you know, the first Tuesday of every month, I share with you some of my own leadership thoughts and perspectives. And this month, I will do some of that as well as share with you a short interview I did with another podcast. I really appreciate all the feedback that you've been sending my way. Keep those coming, Mahan at Mahantavikoli.com. There's also a microphone icon on Mahan at Mahantavikoli.com. There's also a microphone icon on PartneringLeadership.com. You can leave voice messages for me there. Really appreciate the many comments about the solo episode at the beginning of the year about artificial intelligence and also the many other episodes, including the one with Tom Tully, AI Bootcamp for Leaders. I am excited that many of you also see the potential of artificial intelligence and the fact that it is going to transform the way we work over the coming years and it's going to transform our organizations as well. I have many more of those conversations ahead This month, I also wanted to share with you some thoughts about the strategic challenges that a lot of organizations are going to face. One of the ones that many people have been talking about is Google, and they're talking about ChatGPT as a Google killer. I'm not sure that's the case. As I also mentioned in the solo episode at the beginning of January, Google has a more powerful version, at least that's what's been reported. I haven't seen it in deep mind so google's challenge is not a technological challenge it is a strategic and a business model challenge and their challenge is that they might get disrupted the way kodak did a lot of people when they talk about kodak they mistakenly say digital photography is what killed kodak and kodak was caught off guard I recorded a conversation with Steve Sasson, who invented digital photography back in 1975 while at Kodak. And the executives at Kodak, even though at the very beginning, didn't comprehend the impact that digital photography could have, over the years, they realized the impact that it was going to have. They just didn't know what to do because their revenue model and their business model was based on film. Even in 2003, when they introduced their last film, they made significantly more money than they were able to make with digital photography. So in essence, their entire revenue model was challenged with digital photography. And all those people that say they were caught off guard are missing the fact that they could clearly see what was coming They had the technology, but there was no money to be made for them in that technology. And their board and their shareholders would not have accepted if they had said, now we're going to be doing free digital photography and we're going to do away with the film business. This is a similar challenge to what Google has. Google's revenues come from their ads and the search business. And giving a singular, definitive answer to people's questions will potentially eliminate or at the very least drastically reduce that business. The other challenge that a Google faces that an open AI doesn't face is that any of you that have had a chance to play with ChatGPT, while it's tremendously powerful in some respects, It is incredibly wrong in other respects as well. So startups and smaller organizations are willing to take chances while both from a reputation perspective and a legal perspective, an organization like Google is a lot more cautious, which is why a lot of times larger, more established organizations get disrupted by these smaller startups. First and foremost, because their revenue model does not allow them 
to switch. Second part being that their reputation and their risk makes it a lot harder for them to switch. Now, I believe Google has a very smart CEO and a smart board. They have declared code red. They're working on this and they have incorporated some elements of additional DeepMind AI in their search. And I have no doubt that they will continue to reinvent in order to make sure that ChatGPT doesn't take their business away. However, the reason I mentioned this example is that I know most of our organizations and our teams don't have to deal with Google type threats. However, it's essential for us to understand the application of artificial intelligence and technology because it is going to be a threat for those organizations and teams that aren't able to incorporate it effectively in what they do. On a daily basis, I'm finding incredible AI tools that streamline workflows and make things a lot easier. So teams and organizations that are able to capture that potential will be able to more effectively meet the needs of their customers, clients, and the marketplace, and teams that don't will be left behind, which is why we all have to reinvent ourselves. And that's part of what I love about Andy Grove's quote, which I have shared with you many times, only the paranoid survive. And I hope that you like me are paranoid, excited paranoid, to learn because the world around us is consistently changing and the artificial intelligence and some of the other technologies that Azim Azhar had talked about in his book, The Exponential Age, which I'll also link to, will transform our lives and the way we work over the next few years. So in addition to the shows that I will link to in the show notes, I have a conversation coming up on AI and the future of work with Dan Turchin, who is CEO of an AI company called People Rain and host of AI and the Future of Work podcast. Then on March 23rd, I have a conversation with Louis Rosenberg, who is a pioneer in augmented reality and has been very involved in a space as well as the metaverse and its applications to our lives and to businesses. So I have those and many more conversations coming your way as I am excited to learn more about how these technologies will impact our lives and our organizations. Only the paranoid survive. Therefore, with a growth mindset, we can learn and we can take advantage of the opportunities that the technology provides rather than be blindsided by the changes all around us. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a little while back, I had a fun conversation with a podcaster out of Bavaria, Germany, Uwe Dockhorn, for his Liftoff podcast. In the conversation, I shared with him some thoughts on challenges with team alignment, the role friction plays in keeping teams from working effectively together, what successful leaders have in common. And at the end, Uwe asks a fun question about a goosebump moment. So I shared a personal goosebump moment with him. I hope you will enjoy that as well. Don't forget to send me your thoughts and questions, mahanatmahantavakuli.com. There is also the microphone icon on partneringleadership.com. You can leave voice messages for me there. Finally, when you get a chance, leave a rating and review for the podcast that will help more people find the conversations and benefit from them. Now, here's a brief interview I did on Uve's podcast. Welcome to Lift Off with Energizing Results. Well, let me start with an invitation for you before we dive in. This is a safe and neutral space here. The more open and honest you answer the questions that come up to yourself, the more effective this will be for you. Sound good? Okay, here we go. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Mahan Tavakoli. How are you doing, Mahan? And where are you hanging out right now? <laughs> 
I am doing very well, Uwe. I'm right outside of Washington, D.C. in the United States in Potomac, Maryland. And it is a beautiful fall day here with all kinds of colors. It's gorgeous. Happy to be joining you. Oh, don't get me jealous. <laughs> Mahantava Kodi coaches leaders to achieve breakthrough results by unleashing their team's potential. Mahan hosts partnering leadership with guests including Ken Blanchard, Stephen Covey, John Carter, Ram Sharan, and David Rubenstein. I think your mission to unleash your team's potential is remarkable. So I'm very thankful I can talk to you today, Mahan. Uwe, I'm excited because I can already sense the energy that you have. So this will be an energetic conversation of real value to listeners too. And we call this energizing results for a reason, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. So my first question to you is, who is your ideal client and what's the biggest challenge they face? Well, I primarily work with CEOs and their leadership teams where they understand the value of strategy. In many instances, they spend a few days, at least a year, focused on their strategy, but they end up being frustrated with the team misalignment that results in poor execution. So part of what I do is help the team, the senior team, collaborate more effectively and align so they execute the strategic plan better. Well said. I think it goes back to the roots of German military because I think they called it friction. So there's always friction happening and the same is for businesses today. So is that the challenge nowadays as well? Friction is a big part of it, Uwe. So for people to think about is a lot of times when they get together with strategic planning conversations, they have outstanding conversations and then six months or a year later, when the executive team is back together, they're like, oh, wow, we really didn't get that much done toward the strategic plan. And there are always excuses, external environmental factors and other things. Friction, though, as you say, plays a big role in it. It is friction, whether between the executives in the team or friction in getting the organization to behave differently. Because in all cases, strategy requires an element of change and there is friction in getting the organization and the people within the organization to effectively change. Well, thank you for clarifying. And because we're all humans, right? <laughs> what are personal mistakes and common mistakes typically your clients would make when trying to solve that kind of problem? They a lot of times go back to the drawing board, focusing on the strategy rather than spending as much time on the effective execution of it. So many of the senior teams that I've engaged with at times have spent three to five, in a couple of instances, almost two weeks of time on the strategic planning conversations that have come about after a lot of research had been done. But they don't spend half as much time on the ongoing conversations to make sure that that strategic plan is effectively executed. So a year later, they really have the progress that they've made according to the measures that they had outlined. So the biggest mistake is a lot of time spent on the planning and on the strategizing and not as much time spent on making sure the plan is effectively executed. So the key is in the execution and getting into action with the strategy and don't spend too much time on the strategy. So really focus on how to implement that and make it well, via the, the right communication available to who should be aligned to that strategy. That's Uwe, I don't want to underestimate the value of strategy. Strategy is absolutely critical. The reality is though, a lot of times organizations have really great strategies. What differentiates the best is that the best are also able to effectively execute on those strategies. So strategy is critical, but differentiator becomes the execution of that strategy. I hear you. Wonderful. So before I ask Mahan, what is one valuable free action that our audience can easily implement? Let me quickly say something here to our audience. So if you are enjoying the show so far, please rate and recommend us to someone you think could benefit from the show. Thank you in advance for spreading the word. 
So Mahal, what is one valuable action that our audience can implement that will help with that kind of issue? Uwe, I believe leadership more than anything else is example and the example the CEO and the senior leadership team of the organization set. So one of the things that I typically recommend to CEOs and everyone listening to this conversation can do with their teams is to have a meeting where they have a conversation about something significant they have changed their mind about. So the leader gets to start first, share something significant that they've changed their mind about, and then facilitate the conversation going around the table. Now, people wonder what value would that have? First and foremost, it's acknowledging that we are learning and growing and the leader is opening up with that. So that sets the kind of culture and environment where people are more willing to share those types of learning lessons themselves. Second of all, it humanizes the leader of the organization or the CEO. And third of all, it continually makes sure that people are okay talking about issues, problems, mistakes. Part of the reason execution doesn't happen well is that we are more willing to move away from mistakes. We want to not talk about them. So this is an exercise everyone can go through. Think about something significant they have changed their mind about and share that with others. It takes genuine humility and genuine authenticity to do that. And it establishes a very different rapport in the leadership team that has this kind of conversation. And rapport is the, is the foundation to having good conversations, definitely. And I also love that, you know, it's kind of like also an additional point I want to make is that, you know, strategy or being able to share and get kind of like the transformation you mentioned earlier, as you go along, it, it enables your flexibility with your strategy. If you have to adjust when you're going, it's kind of like that, you know, that uh, picture of a tanker, you know, it takes some time to, to course correct. <laughs> And in that regard, is that fair to say? That is an incredibly important part of it because you can have the best laid plans. The American boxer, Mike Tyson had said, your plans go out the window when you get punched in the face. <laughs> and that. the reality with executing strategy or plans, the same thing happens. Planning, Eisenhower had said, is of tremendous value. Plans to a certain extent are worthless. Same way with strategic plans in that the planning process adds value, but it's that ability to constantly learn, change course as needed, collaborate effectively, that helps the team and organization execute on those initial plans. I love that quote from Mike Tyson. I use it all the time. So it's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful one. It's very visual, so people can really. It's very to punchy, too, right? <laughs> All right, I knew we were having fun. Yeah. So, man, I want to give you also the opportunity and the platform to share where people can find you and also what is one valuable free resource that you can direct people to that will have with that also in a broader sense. Over, you mentioned it at the beginning. I'm fortunate to have a top 1% podcast. So I get some great guests who very selflessly share some of their leadership advice and insights. Top CEOs and top global authors partnering leadership. It's on all podcast platforms and partneringleadership.com. Additionally, on mahantavakoli.com, the website, there is a free framework that people can download, which is the four step that they can assess and go through to unleash their team's performance. There is no need for others. You can, with a growth mindset, look and assess your own team and organization, and then look for ways to improve. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Of course, we put the link in the show description so folks can check it out. So Maha, what's the one question I should have asked you that would be of great value to our audience? Uwe, you've already asked lots of great questions and I've really enjoyed the dynamics of the conversation. Your energy adds a lot of value. But the one thing I think might add additional value to the audience 
is I have been fortunate to work with some of the top executives across the globe. And the question would be, what are some of the things that they have in common? And when I was reflecting on it, I think there are three things that, in my view, these top executives have in common. One is that they combine a level of clarity with flexibility. Clarity of direction and flexibility on how to get there. That's an element of the vision and execution. Clarity and flexibility. Second one is that true humble confidence or humility and confidence combined. They're humble recognizing the necessity of effectively engaging others and bringing along the organization. However, they are confident in themselves. They are not brought down by negative comments of others. That balance of humble and confidence. And then finally, they have a growth mindset. They are the ones like David Rubenstein, you mentioned I had a conversation with him, is a billionaire philanthropist, founder of Carlisle Group. To this day, David reads more than a hundred books a year. And I know he does because he interviews authors and he talks about the books. He consistently learns. So the most effective CEOs have a growth mindset, not coming up with excuses why they don't have the time to learn, but always making it a priority and understanding that they are not there yet and can continually learn. Wow, that's remarkable and very inspiring. So thank you for saying, and uh, you got it here, right? These are the gold nuggets that we wanted to hear from you, Mahan. Thank you for sharing. And you know, this brings me to my final question and it's a personal one. When was the last time you experienced goosebumps with your family and why? Uber, believe it or not, it was yesterday. I believe because it. Because a year ago from yesterday, my daughter who plays volleyball, 12 year old, now 12 year old, she was 11. She had played volleyball. She had tried out for a bunch of different clubs, including the club she wanted to get into. And she didn't get into the club. So at that year ago point, when we realized she didn't get into the club, she was crying. And I have to tell you, I have a soft spot in my heart. I was crying along with her because she has a lot of passion for it. Eventually, because of a couple of changes in the clubs, she was admitted into one of the club teams, the lowest level of it. But what she did is she was really disciplined. She listened to me and did push-ups every day. At the beginning, couldn't go down at all. Now she can almost go down to the ground, practiced her jumps. So yesterday, she not only made it to the club that she wanted to, she made it to a higher level club because they were so impressed not only with her volleyball skills, but also with her athleticism that has improved so drastically. So we really, as a family, had goosebumps and it was such a great learning lesson for my girls that we all need to have a growth mindset. No one is smart. No one is athletic. No one is capable, just born that way as a child. People have to work hard on it. And my daughter had fortunately worked hard for a year and that gave us goosebumps yesterday. Well, they're lucky to have you as their role model and the leader in the <laughs> for them. So this is an amazing goosebumps moment and mission accomplished having the shivers right now. So thank you, Mahan, for sharing this beautiful goosebumps moment. Also, thank you. For our conversation, it was a pleasure talking to you and I appreciate very much the knowledge and insights you share with us today. My absolute pleasure, Uwe, and thank you for doing such an outstanding job, shining a light on other people and sharing some of your genuine energy with them and with your audience. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening and as always, energizing results to you and your loved ones. You have been listening to Partnering Leadership with your host, Mahan Tavakoli. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review of the podcast on your favorite podcasting app and forward the conversation to a friend or colleague so you can help more people discover their purpose, grow professionally with meaning, and have a greater impact. For additional leadership insights and bonus content, visit us at partneringleadership.com.
www.thepowerhouse.com.